back to another video guys in this video i am going to go through the all new x tool d5s this is one of the latest tools uh, that's just come out by x tool a brilliant piece of kit uh, i have mentioned in the previous video this tool has a free lifetime update now you don't get this with most tools i know some uh, other diagnostic machines do offer the same similar price maybe maybe more maybe less uh, depending on who you go for but x tool has been around for a good few years um, then again, everything's trial and error, but from what this tool can offer and the price that it offers, it's around 130 quid, depending on the offer they have. Uh, believe you or me, it's not bad at all, uh, comparing it to the manufacturers. Um, now it can do various different, uh, special functions such as in co injecting, uh, coding. Um, there are EGR, uh, throttle relearn. There's many different things it can offer. Um, then again, you've got to think about the price and like I said, the price is pr pretty damn good in terms of what it can offer. So we'll start yeah, off with functions, whether, you know, you want to just do an auto VIN scan. So it'll pick the vehicle up, pick the VIN chassis up, um, and we'll go into the modules or you can do it manually. So we'll do diagnosis in this, uh, in this case. Um, and it covers a large variety of vehicles. So for instance, the American vehicles, this is what it covers. Asia, these are the vehicles it covers, um, Australia, there you are, China, so has a good variety of vehicles, um, Europe as well, as you can see, covers a wide variety, so there you are, and then let's just say, yeah, let's go back to Asia, um, the vehicle, so if we're picking it manually, we're going to Toyota, okay, so I'll pick it up. So this is if you were doing it manually, we'll go Europe because the vehicle's Europe. Automatic detection, we'll do that without smart key. So it's already picking the VIN chassis up and yes, that is correct. That is the right VIN chassis. Uh, we can do a full scan or a system selection. We'll just do a full scan so it goes through all three modules. Um, so everything's passed in this car. Now the engine's running, but you could have the ignition on if you wanted to, it's not a problem. For instance, uh, um, let's just go into the engine section, okay? Um, you can do read data, obviously nothing. Clear data if you wanted to. Live data is the O2 sensors and every module there is within the engine compartment. So as you can see, this is live. It's pretty damn good, it's, especially if you're in the mechanic world and you wanna track and trace things. So you can highlight it as well. Um, trying to think what else we can do. So that's your RPM. Obviously, if I was to put my foot down, it goes up. So it tells you that there is connection and it's working fine. There is a lot of different things. And the touchscreen as well, by the way, is pretty damn good. It's not too sensitive where it starts clicking things for no reason. Uh, there you go, two sensors. I mean, these are just some of the, the things. So misfire, okay, available, that's fine. If you come back at read freeze data, uh, there is no freeze. Okay, that's fine. So if you come back at this, uh, for the ABS as well, and uh, let's have a look. It'll be the same thing as well. Live data, I, I don't know what it will bring in terms of live data other than the ABS bump and whatnot. So there are your speed sensors. Okay, so you can tell if the speed sensor's out. So if you're, if you're getting traction light on, or yeah, I don't know, you can detect which sensor it is in that sense. Um, there are a few good things to be fair. So, as you can see, it is capable of a lot of things. This zero point your rate, okay. Mm, that's interesting. So, I'll not bore you too much with that. Uh, but as we can see, yeah, it has got a lot of different things within the airbag control module. I don't think there is anything much uh, you can go on about on here compared to the engine section there's only two that's fine now this is just some of which okay so we've done a full scan so if you wanted to let's say there was fault code uh, within them stored and you just wanted to clear it all you just do clear all dtc boom i'll do it pause the report is when um this is if you wanted to kind of check everything in terms of keeping a record of it so you can save it um, it keeps a record of the car and I'll show you, if I'm not mistaken, I'll show you where you can go with that one. Okay, 
come back out of this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, go into here, diagnostic report. So as you can see, it's already, we've already done one and it, it tells you the time and date. You click on it, it saves the record, which is good. Um, very good, um, especially if you're, a, if you're a garage and you've done a diagnostic on a vehicle and the guy goes off and then comes back later on saying, oh, you know what? Earlier on, there was like 20 fault codes. Obviously, you've cleared the codes and you've sent the, the driver away. They've driven it. It's come back with a fault again. And now that you've put it on a diagnostic machine again and you can see out of the 20 faults, you can now see that two has come back positive. So it's pretty good to, co to do that comparison. Um, which is fine. We'll leave that there. Um, coming out of this, so special functions, okay? So these are the special functions it has. I'm not going to do anything on this. Because I know when you start playing up with things, it'll play up with the car itself anyway. I mean, don't worry about that. It's just a tire pressure warning light. But I'm just going to go through things it can cover. So the ABS bleeding, okay, if you've changed pads, whatnot. Um, ABS pump, you can hit that, do it. Battery uh, reset, you can do that. EGR relearn, especially for the diesel world, this is. You've got that function there, electronic parking brake. Obviously this is manual, but um, if you was to um, have a, well, most of the new cars are all electronic. So if you were gonna change the pads, you'd really need to use that to release the parking brake. That's your steering angle sensor, which is this here. Um, a lot of cars do uh, mess up. Obviously the older they get, the worse they get, and they, they mess up, so you'll have to code it in. DPF. Um, so it's diesel particulate filter, a regen, so you can do that, you know. Obviously this is petrol. Uh, maintenance light reset, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do this one. Um, it's not gonna kill us, this one, so it's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna show you, so Toyota. Um, and then we're gonna go into the reset function. So oil maintenance reset, um, Yaris 2015, Okay, so it tells us what you can do manually as well. So oh, it tells us turn on the ignition. So it's telling them what to do manually. Uh, let's go into ooh, this one again manually. It's telling us the manual version of it. Um, but yeah, well that's that's that time but warning. Um, I remember some vehicles will have to be done not manually and it has to be done um, through the machine, which this will do anyway. But this, in this case, tells us that this specific model will require manually, which is fine. Gearbox matching, suspension system. If you're in the Jaguar Land Rover world, you can reset them and code in, inject code in, headlight adjustment, window initialization. Uh, obviously, inject code in, don't forget. Um, to be fair, this is like a professional tool. It's high up in the game. Um, just amazing that you can pick these machines up for around about 130 quid. Whereas back in days, the, you know, you'd be dreaming to get one for a minimum of five, 600 quid. Um, so, injector coding, I'm sure you all know, once you change it, sometimes the car will start, sometimes it won't, it'll just crank. Um, you'll have to code it in to the ECU, whatnot, and then it'll crank over. Window initialization, I have spoken this on the previous video as well. It's like, how if I do that, look, it comes all the way down, right? And I do that, it goes all the way up. Now, I have realized I've worked on a lot of BMs and Mercs in the past, um, and what tends to mess up is when they have a dead battery or they go into an accident, this automated downwards, how it goes all the way downwards, will not work it'll just it'll just be a touch like this every now and again and then when it does go all the way up it doesn't especially on the two door versions um it'll just stop and you've got that much gap and rain you know what water whatnot will go in the vehicle and what you'll need to do so, is we know what that is crank sensor tire pressure monitor reset throttle matching i mean oh doo -doo -doo. let's have a look Well, they're the vehicles it covers from Europe. 
Asian. Let's have a look. And these are the vehicles it covers in. So they're the codes for not the spare wheel, but obviously we don't have that. But they're the codes. So if every time you change the, um, uh, let's say, the sensor within the tires, you will require a coding, especially on the tilt to weld. Because um, obviously, if you don't do it, then it'll just bring up that that warning there. Um, but there you are, uh, so cleared, so if I've cleared it, obviously as you can see it resets, it's the same way as doing it on the screen cluster there, but we're not overly fussed, but that's relearn, I'm sure that'll be, I don't want to fiddle with it too much, but that's how you would do it, so if you've changed the sensor, you just do it that way, um, but yeah, that's everything we kind of know about the machine it's it's pretty simple it's, it's usually friendly it's nothing crazy it's nothing like you get stuck with it's dead straightforward you can even see the pictures you can see you'll see the fault code there's nothing crazy and uh, i'm sure if you do get stuck you can always go on to Tool or go online and just find videos like you know on youtube like that myself and we'll be able to go through things but um yeah it is a good machine for, for the price, and I will put the link below so you can all grab one if you wanted to. Um, this one specifically goes into the engine section, so the so auto scan. Uh, so here, you can go, like I said, you can go into the engine, so I don't think there's anything stored. Uh, that's the live data, read, component test, um, so it doesn't support this specific model. But um, onboard monitor test, so your EGR exhaust misfire, I don't know, misfire counts, it's detected nothing. That, do you know what, that's really good. I have um, seen in the past, that, what vehicle was I in? Um, sh I'm sure it was a Ford uh, 1.5 petrol, and it kept misfiring, but I wasn't getting any um, any warning on there. But I could feel the misfire, and I did go onto it. Um, and it told me which cylinder misfired the most. So like, as you saw there, and I was able to detect, I think it was cylinder three, if I'm not mistaken. I have videos, but it, it's really good. It comes really handy when, when, when you want to use it and you want to track and trace. But remember, like, misfire doesn't always come up on there. Um, it will, I don't know, you'll feel it, you'll feel the judder, you'll feel the engine misfiring, but the engine light doesn't come on, so it's always good to have these. You'll be able to pinpoint it straight away. But yeah, any questions, um, anything you want me to answer, guys, by all means, pop it in the comment below. I'll try and get back to you all. Um, I do get over 20, 30 messages a day, so I'll try and keep on top of it all. Uh, but yeah, this is the all new machine, and it's quite hard. Yeah, well, it's very handy, I'll say that. Uh, good, tough screen as well. It's nothing like your cheap stuff, if that makes sense. Um, Internally built, built 32 gig. You can put 128 gig in. Um, really easy and simple. But yeah. Any questions? Let us know, guys.